Hey guys, so submarines today are part of 39 different countries' navies. Now, six of those countries have nuclear submarine fleets, and three more are planning to build their first nuclear submarines. But the biggest submarines belong to Russia and the U.S. Modern nuclear submarines are heavy, strategic missile cruisers with nuclear weaponry on board. And in today's video, you'll see what the inside of the world's most powerful submarine looks like. So, the largest nuclear submarines in the world are the American Ohio class and the Russian Project 941 Akula, NATO Typhoon. The most famous being the TK-208 Dmitry Donskoy. This submarine broke many world records such as the most powerful weaponry, longest ship, largest water displacement, and quietest movement, among others. The 941 Akula Strategic Project was developed in St. Petersburg by the Rubin Design Bureau under the leadership of Sergei Kovalev, and the first Akula-class ship was pledged at Sevmash event in 1976. It was first used in 1980 and is now the only submarine of its type in the Russian Navy. Akula-class ships are the longest submarines in the world. It is 574 feet long, which is almost two soccer stadiums, and is about 75 feet tall. Now, the submarine displaces about 48,000 tons of water, equivalent to over 19 Olympic swimming pools filled to the brim. It is fed by a pair of OK-650 nuclear reactors. Each produces 190 MWTs of heat energy. Producing that amount of energy on land would require about 2 million 200-watt solar panels. The ship is equipped with two 50,000-horsepower turbines. Its maximum speed is 27 knots while submerged. Now imagine a nine-story building that can move 30 miles per hour in the water and 22 knots at the surface. In 1986, the Akula was put into the Guinness Book of World Records. It differs from all others in its unusual construction, looking like a kind of paddle boat with two shells and 20 launch tubes with ICBMs in between them. The missiles are located in the front section of the ship, in front of the retractable gear's barrier, and between the two shells instead of being inside a sturdy shell, like usual. The entire design is held together by a light shell whose inside has space for three more durable capsules, the command module with a central station, a torpedo bay in the nose section, and mechanical bay in the rear. It fits three functional and independent sectors in the space between the main shells, which increases the ship's fire safety. It fits three functional and independent sectors in the space between the main shells, which increases the ship's fire safety and durability. The shell is covered with a thick plastic coat to reduce noise, which lets it blend into the ocean so well, sometimes whales and orcas think the ship is part of the pod, creating additional cover. The submarine is capable of working in the Arctic North and can autonomously complete tactical maneuvers in and under the ice. The Akula shell is capable of breaking through chunks of ice up to eight feet thick, unlike the American Ohio, which isn't designed for cold waters. The submarine's huge size is due to the size of the new three-stage ICBMs that it carries. Now, compared to American missiles, these R-39s have a greater flight range of 5,200 miles. That means they can reach the equator from the North Pole. There are 20 giant 90-ton warheads that are 52 feet long and 8.2 feet in diameter on the Dmitry Donskoy. The sub also carries four 21-inch and two 26-inch torpedoes. Anti-air defense is made up of eight Igla-1 SAM systems. The submarine's design is so unique that no one has been able to copy it, and some experts don't even think it's possible to do so. So the ship resembles visually a slightly flattened baguette, and the inside has two parallel cigar-shaped cylinders, 33 feet in diameter, with three connecting passageways between them. You could say there are two submarines and one giant shell, since each cylinder has everything replicated, including the reactors, turbines, and cabins. Thanks to this design, the submarines have a low rate of death. If one of the halves has a failure, 
the submarine will be able to complete its assignment and return to the base thanks to the second half. There is a total of 19 watertight rooms. There are two lifeboats large enough for the entire crew, located at the cockpit's base. The crew is made up of 160 sailors, with 52 of them being officers. Now, the command station emerges from the cockpit when above water. Inside the cockpit, you will find various retractable devices, radio equipment, antennae, and periscopes. The lower deck in the center leads to the command station, as well as to the missile and torpedo base. Now, a lot of people imagine thousands of vents, pipes, and fixtures when they imagine submarines. Well, that is true, but a part of the Akula's living quarters kind of looks more like a train car. Long corridors, sliding doors, and plastic detail work. Now, if you continue on past the living quarters, you'll reach the recreation zone. And submarine sailors call this the mental relief zone. Understandably so. You'll find comfortable rocking chairs there that you can sit in and watch your favorite movies. And they've even kept the same old tube TV that was specifically designed to be installed on submarines. There are flowers and a fish aquarium. Now, if you continue on from the mental relief zone, you'll find something else that you might not think would be in a submarine, a gym with a pool. A bit further is a sauna and showers. Now, the pool is always filled with outside salt water. And the Dmitry Dunskoy was made to serve in the north, so the water is pretty cold. Just what you need, though, after sitting in the sauna. The steam room is electric for safety, but some part of it is still heated with the nuclear power. If you want to get to the mess room, the crew's cabins, or other places, you need to pass through more residential quarters and corridors. The command staff and military commanders live in individual rooms. Low-ranking officers live in pairs. Sailors and crew live in fours. Now, the crew's cabins are just like those in sleeper trains, especially in regard to the upper bunks. But they are much more comfortable here. There are writing desks, dressers, and wash sinks. There's a breathing apparatus above each sleeping spot, which is necessary to protect your respiratory organs and vision if you're in a section with harmful chemical substances. Now, the mess hall looks like a museum cafeteria by no mistake. In the late 2000s, with support from the Tula Kulakova Field Museum, a constantly active exposition was put on the ship. They hit a secret door that almost completely blends into the walls in the mess hall. It's one of two entrances to the crew quarters in the galley, or the so-called cookhouse. Professional cooks work there who regularly undergo training. A sailor's daily food intake includes chocolate, red wine, red caviar, or salmon. They also celebrate holidays on board. A cake is made for every birthday, which is given to the person of honor in the command station. A separate corridor runs to the commander's quarters and their mess hall. This is where our tour inside the world's most powerful nuclear submarine ends, because the strategically important sections, of course, are off limits to all the others. The Dmitry Donskoy submarine is unique because everyone knows about it and its image was used in many films, including documentaries and books. American journalist Mark Episkopos evaluated the Dmitry Donskoy's lethal capabilities by calling it a, quote, judgment day machine. Dun, dun, dun. So what do you think? Is it worth spending so much government money on building submarines? And would you be willing to work on that submarine too? Let me know that in the comments. Uh, leave a like too while you're at it. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, we'll see you again next time.